Hello everyone, welcome to this new tutorial on Falcon BMS. Current version is 437 update 2 and I will guide you through the REM start as quickly as possible but also making sure you do not forget some essentials during this training. So let's go and prepare our plane before engine start. Uh, for now I have not activated my track IR but I will later on. So currently, we're going to put our electrical power to battery. Once we put the electrical power to battery, we're just going to perform a quick test with the FLCS. As you can see, and if you go into your documentation folder and retrieve the checklist, you will be able to see what lights are supposed to be available. Currently, I can tell you that uh, given the tests, we have the proper lights showing up, especially the light, the ch different channels on the FLCS and also the different lights that you see powering on, on the, the electrical panel. Currently, we have uh, not set any failures, um, random failures in PMS, so we should have a pretty standard and clean setup for the plane. Right now, before we start the engine, we're going to set a couple switches here. The first one to set is going to be the fuel. Fuel is going to be on normal. Then we're going to have the COM set up. COM1, COM2, set the level accordingly and set the UHF backup on both. I'm going to leave this channel to 06 because I don't need to have this one performing anything while I'm on the ground for now and I will use the uh, DED later on, but we'll go through the process. Now, let me enable my track IR so I can show you here. The air source will go to NOR. And now we've done that, we're going to set the ATIs to auto. We have set up the essentials. And as usual, I will not advise you to actually run up anything else before starting the engine or before doing the EPU tests because currently we have not set up or at least modeled any other current failures. But in the future, if we may, I do recommend not to power on any other uh, panels except probably the lights that we're going to do now. Um, and that would be it. The reason being that during the EPU tests, uh, overcurrent can appear and obviously some panel, some systems are more sensitive to overcurrent and we don't want to have them failing. Let's switch the main power to main power and we're going to be ready now to perform the REM start. Let's not close down the canopy for now, but let's put our GFS on start two. Quickly, we're going to focus on the RPM and FDIP in order to make sure that we do not have anything outside of the uh, normal ranges of those gauges. First thing first, don't forget, we're going to monitor the sec here disappearing. And as per the checklist, we're going to wait also one minute since we switch down the GFS to position 2 and always use a position 2 as a reminder because position 1 still model in BMS but less efficient in terms of uh, performing the REMS out for the engine. So we see SEC has disappeared and we're going to have now uh, the RPM above 25 so between 25, 20, uh, 24-25%. Wait a minute which is more or less where we are at now and push the throttle to idle. As you can see, the RPM should be slowly raising and let's control the temperature as well because we don't want to have the temperature above 700 degrees for too long. As you can see, we're going to reach a 50% and over uh, 50 to 60%, the GFS should stop as we hear now and leaving now the engine running solo without assistance. Let's control the temperature. It should stop around 70%. We're slowly reaching 700 and quickly lowering down to something below 500.
All right, as you can see, we've got a good startup. And before we go, we do anything else, let's focus on the anti-ice test. Push that to on. As you can see, temperature is rising. And let's put that back to auto. Now, let's do quickly an EPU test. Before anything, let's contact the ground crew and remove the safety pin. Now the safety pin has been removed, we're going to be able to uh, do the EPU test. Take this let switch up, put the RPM above 80%, and as you can see, we've got the EPU test successful, as you see the channels lighting up, and the EPU with air and a green light. Now, lower down, you see the warnings on the electrical panel, and let's remove the EPU gen. Let's do the other controls. The overheat, so we see the overheat it um, showing up here on the lower fault panel. Poke test, let me quickly check the, with the, as you can see, there you go, probe heat blinking. Some tests, oxygen tests, there you go. And control all the loader lights. As you can see, Warning. everything powered on. Gamma. We're good Counter. to go. Cap. Flare. And we're set. Right now, what's going to happen is that I'm going to lower down the canopy. Canopy lower down and secure it. Second step is go to the SEC mode. As you can see, engine enter the secondary mode and nozzle is back to zero. Even if I give a bit of RPM, nozzle position will not move. Now let's go back to primary mode. All right, nozzle position is back to a normal and within standard and we can move on from there. All right, so now we've tested everything engine related. We can start running our internal computers, MMC, FDs, UFC, maps not modeled, data link, GPS, and start the alignment process. While we're doing that, now let's focus on the other panels. We can put the IFF to standby. Then uh, now we've run, uh, the flash will lower will be later on. Um, so we can activate uh, the ECM if we've got one. TWA here, running up. Missile warning system, which is not modeled currently. Jammer, RWR, channel, flare, a uh, chef, sorry, um, flare, and here to standby. Let's focus on the HMCS later on. Now checking the gear panel. Let's lower the ejection seats for better visibility of the handles. Currently we've got the lower handles uh, for the gear. We th see three green lights and here we've got the hook up. Never put it down on the ground otherwise basically currently um, it should not be brought up after <laughs> you've lowered it down so be careful with that. Um, store config as always as per briefing set it up to cat1 or cat at three, depending on your current setup and what the briefing says. The lights will come later on once we're ready. Let's clear the uh, warning here uh, for the uh, warning receiver. Let's put that to a handoff position. HUD and heart points, FCR, radar to standby, oxygen to on. Now we've done that, there's a couple of tests and things we need to do. First, let's test quickly the fuel. 6,000, we're good. Let's back to NOR. Then we want to start communicating with the outside. Let's go to DT and load the DT. It will load up everything in regards to your mission parameters and here especially we're going to be interested in the comps. All right, so we loaded up the uh, DT and now let's switch the CNI switch 
from backup to UFC. Here we're still in the INS page, so go to return. We're going to be back on the main page and through the rocker UHF and let's put the UHF to position two and the VHF here will be according to your briefing and what your leader will say. Once you've done that, I advise you, you put that rocker back to UHF um, and go to list. First, bingo. Set that to what you need here for, for the ex purpose of that example, 2500 will be fine. Go back to list. Um, we're going to check the data link. Data link, uh, there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Everything's written from a manual perspective. So here, uh, if you need to set up accordingly to your uh, leader or tell that to your wingman what you're going to set up by default, those positions should, should be pre-filled with uh, your different wingmans. If you've got four, it should be 12, 13, 14 here. So that's the in, that's the that's your flight uh, in the position one to four. And outside of your flight, you can actually enter uh, the other uh, index for the other planes that you want to have in your data link feedback. Let's consider that we've said that correctly and we want to go back. So let's go back uh, to the uh, list page. There's a couple other things that we need to be um, aware of, especially here on the MIS panel here, laser. Um, set that accordingly in terms of code, in terms of laser, uh, TGP, uh, which is the uh, when you want to detect a specific length, wavelength of laser code. This is the lasing code put that to combat if you've got a laser uh, setup, uh, TGP, um, and laser time is uh, the auto lasing time uh, uh, to impact. So here it's eight seconds to impact, it will start lasing. Go to list. Last thing that we need to do um, is getting to the um, HMCS. So let's do a sequence and we're going to do the alignment. All right, so as you can see, it's currently blinking here. So the alignment is ready and let's put that switch to nav. Now, one of the uh, information that you will see here will be that you see your map with the steer points being drawn on the, HM on the HSD, which is the uh, um, signaling that you've got everything set up uh, in terms of um, uh, GPS position. And now we've got the uh, AGI ready. Uh, we're also going to have the ability to start the bit test um, because everything's set up uh, from an INS and uh, FLCS perspective. Um, so before that, there's a couple of things. Um, radar, a CRM. Uh, you don't see anything here because there's a weight on wheel uh, switch, which means that your um, uh, your plane, will actually your radar, will not p be powered on un until you've got the front wheel that is um, uh, not on the ground anymore. So here I'm going to have the HMCS and as you can see it's not aligned properly because it should be not showing up while aligned with the HUD. So we're still on the HMCS align. Let's put the M cell to zero and be advised that you also need on your HODAS to have the cursor enabled. Um, switch uh, assign. All right, so zero M cell. Uh, let's align here the cross properly. You can do that with your um, tracker also enabled. Let's do that properly. And all right, so now cursor enable and you will see the alignment is okay. So now M cell again, twice. So here we don't need to set up anything. Uh, we consider that it's uh, currently aligned properly and the role, same thing, we consider the role is currently um, set properly. All right, so we've got now the HSC, HMCS aligned and we're more or less almost ready to go. All right, don't forget DMS down long in order to pull the HMCS out and we're just going to, going to do a reset of the FLCS, disconnect, 
um, and do the bit test. So let's go outside while well, the bit test is running. What is important to know is that the uh, different surfaces from the plane will now enter a preset role of different commands and puts that will uh, be known from you and the ground crew and it will be a way for everyone to understand if the surfaces are behaving correctly. It's a preset um, sequence and you can actually review it uh, inside outside. Uh, so if you were checking here, uh, it's a bit hard, but if you've got VR headset or tracker R currently set, you should be able to extend a bit your head and look what's happening behind. So all right, so here you go. It has reset and now we control the panel here. There's no fault, there's nothing. Um, no more fault here and we check the panel here, RWR, and we're just going to acknowledge that and it should be now um, suppressing any other uh, mis uh, issues that should not be there anymore. Now we consider that we have a good start. Uh, according to your uh, uh, either uh, instructions, briefing, I do recommend that you put the IFF uh, to norm here, that you put the uh, uh, flash to um, position lights to flash, and that you set the anti collision now that you are ready to roll. Before we remove the chokes, um, let's set, set that to taxi and the parking brake to on. You can call the ground crew and remove the chokes. There you go. You should see from the outside that everything has been removed. I would also advise that if you can test the air brakes before anything, it would be also very much um, part of your checklist, making sure that your brakes are working fine. There you go. And go back to the pit. And now uh, your plane is ready to roll, almost. You can set the radar altitude altimeter to uh, on and you can call now the ground tower, the, the ground um, ATC signal that you're ready to roll and look for the runway that has been directed by the ATC. From that point on, uh, you should have everything set up in order to start your flight and roll your mission. I hope you appreciated that tutorial and I hope to see you next time for another tutorial, whether it is on the Falcon Lounge or anywhere else. Thank you very much and see you soon.